Welcome back to Drew Pearson Live. Today we are here at the Bomb Factory in Dallas, Texas, and we are honored to have Mark Giamatti from Alter Bridge on. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you so much for being with us. This is exciting, you had a big rock show tonight, mm -hmm. but even more exciting, the sixth album just came out, and, yes. and you guys, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's, it seems to have gone by so quickly. Do you, it feels like yesterday we put out our first record, but um, yeah. you look at pictures and we look like little kids, so it's, yeah. it's been a while sure yeah but this album is is a little bit different and, but fans are loving it you know yeah it's been a great release you know it um we got a uh, text the other day with a picture it was number one worldwide and and uh, it's the first time we achieved that so it's uh you know we 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 finally made it to the big time yeah <laughs> well you guys have been just just album tour album tour for the last mm -hmm. i guess 15 years now, yeah right? yeah which is nuts but but now things are just just sort of on Autopilot almost, right? You guys have a, a great built-in crowd mm -hmm. and actually even even bigger overseas, right? Yeah, it seems like we're, um, you know, Europe is definitely our biggest market, mm -hmm. but um, South America is great for us, Australia, Indonesia, a lot of, a lot of places that uh, it's tough to get to every album cycle. So we're trying, we're trying to get everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, in writing this one, like, I guess in the process of it, mm -hmm. were you, were you, uh, trying to make it a little bit different or uh, you know change up the sound a little bit just to challenge yourself or is it mm -hmm. just naturally every record we about? try to put a new element and you know a new color and some new style in there mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's a guitar tuning uh, last record I broke out a seven string guitar just yeah. to uh, you know try to tackle that on this record it was um, I heard a song called tech noir on the radio and it had the old school synth you know um, John Carpenter-esque yeah. kind of stuff, and uh, I was never a fan of, of keyboards in rock and roll music, but um, when I heard that, I was like, we could really incorporate that. So there's three or four songs that, that we did on, on this record. Yeah, and mm -hmm. where in the world do these monster riffs come from? <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of time, you know, we have a lot of time on tour to, to write, you know. Mm -hmm. If I'm on tour, if I'm away from my kids, I'm working, I'm writing, and um, on the tour bus, just guitar in hand, trying to come up with as much as I can. Yeah. So are you one of those guys that just uh, that just uh, naturally just always have the guitar around, and or or is it once you're off stage then? I try. It there? I try to have. I always have an amp set up, a guitar set up. Um, I'll have my laptop around to organize my ideas, and yeah. uh, I'm either just practicing how to play or just um, writing. You know. Yeah. So it's but it's what I like to do. You know. People say how how do you uh, stay proficient and mm -hmm. and uh, get records out as yeah. much as you do and. It's because we're doing what we love. Our hobby and our yeah. is, is our career. So it's um, it's never a day that goes by without us wanting to to, to work because it's it's our it's our happy spot. Yeah. Well, and after doing it for so long too, it's you know, and it, these days are different. Touring now is much different than it was in the '90s. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> it definitely is. You know, when we first started touring back in the Creed days, it was uh, you know, all nice, big, cushy arenas, and and then we you know creed breaks up and we start back over in the clubs and the you know vans and it was uh so i've seen it all i've done it all when we first started we were driving in vans so i've i, I like uh i like playing all kinds of different venues as well so it's yeah. it's been a fun journey yeah well the creed days were interesting because mm -hmm. everything just got so big so quickly and then mm -hmm. what was that what was that like to be on that side of that um to us we didn't know if it was quick or slow we just mm. it was the first time we'd ever experienced something like that um it was never an overnight thing it was mm. just kind of a grad uh, you know it kind of took off uh, each single the fan base got bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger but um looking back on it now um i really appreciate the things we achieved back then because it's so hard to, to get a number one song or a number one record or to get fans at all coming out to your yeah. shows it's a it's a it's an achievement. So anytime anybody wants to talk smack about any band out there touring, I'm like, you yeah. know how difficult it is in mm -hmm. 2019 to have a career on the road. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're on the road touring, you're doing something right. Yeah. Well, plus it's hard to sell the physical records as much yeah. these days too. Mm -hmm. But you know, you came along at a great time with Creed with that. Like, how many mm -hmm. how many records was the final total? How many millions? Was I it? have no. I, I've seen. I, I haven't counted. But Wikipedia I, is never correct. So yeah, <laughs> people say, say fifty five million yeah. or something like that. I don't know. Our, our first record. Um, I don't know what's what is that. It, I think I know our second record is is about eleven million or yeah. so, and the third record I think is, who knows? I have no idea. Crazy, you know, right? <laughs> stop. I, I, I didn't count, but I'm just proud of those those, yeah. those sales. But also, just just thinking about how many people that you've touched 
with your music. Yeah. Millions of people. That's that's got to be a wonderful feeling. Yeah, music is uh, it's one of those things. It's got this magical effect on people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that um, somebody like me or another songwriter can just take something out of nowhere and have it uh, become a song that that really affects people's lives. Yeah. You know, I've seen people with. You know, they'll pull their shirt up and there'll just be lyrics all across their chest or just pictures of the bands or it just means so much to them. Yeah. A lot of people have said, you know, I've gone through really tough times. I lost someone. Your music helped me through that moment. And mm -hmm. um, lots of deep, I've seen gravestones with lyrics on them. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's tough to see it sometimes, but yeah. it makes you know you're doing something right if it means that much to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who was that guitar player or band for you that you saw or heard and you go, this is what I have to do? There's plenty of them, you know. When I was when I was a young kid, whenever a song came on the radio where the band dropped out and it was just a guitar, yeah. I was always drawn to it. Boston did that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, the first album I bought was um, Jay Giles' band Love Stinks. Oh yeah, because it broke down to just the guitar doing mm -hmm. the simple riff. But I loved the sound of a guitar, so um, I had a buddy whose older brother played guitar, and I just listened by his door. I was just really drawn to it. My older brother listened to, you know, Kiss and Ted Nugent and all these guitar heavy bands. And when I found Metallica, it made me go nuts for music. And uh, yeah. so I was, a, I was a heavy metal kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you also had the great honor of, of not only uh, touring with some of these bands, mm -hmm. but getting to know them as friends. And, mm -hmm. and what has that been like? Ah, uh, it's nuts. You know, I still get, uh, I remember the first time I met James Hetfield, I was yeah. terrified, you know, and he was, uh, when I first met him, um, my security guard introduced us and then kind of left us there. You know, I was like, ah, so. <laughs> <You know>? so. <laughs> but uh, since then, I've gotten to meet so many people, and um, yeah, it's great. Most most of everybody you've I grew up liking yeah. as as a fan turned out to be wonderful people. So it's been it's been good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and now you've got kids out there that are watching what you're doing the whole time, mm -hmm. and they're looking up on the stage, going, "That's what I want to do." What do you tell yeah. them? Because it's not easy by any means. You know, I. Um, First of all, when I when I meet somebody like that, I remember how I was when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I try to I try to give as much as I can because yeah. I know how important it was when I was yeah. younger. Um, but I just tell them, you know, I I do songwriting clinics and guitar playing mm -hmm. clinics and stuff. So I try to just let people know how I go about what I do, which isn't necessarily the right or wrong way to do it. It's just the way I I do it. So I give whatever advice I can. When people ask me how do I get a, to start in this business, mm -hmm. I have no idea anymore. It's yeah. the life is. I mean the. The business has changed so much over the years that it's a moving target now, and yeah. one year it's completely different than the next. So it's at the core of it: write a great song, mm -hmm. put everything you can into that, and uh, build it from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, on Drew Pearson Live, we always ask people their hail mary moment—the mm -hmm. moment in their life or career where they just had to go for it and it worked out for them. What do you suppose that was for you? Um, I think uh, if I didn't have the local radio station in Tallahassee play, you know, we 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 all saved up money. Yeah. Um, I was working as a cook. Um, Scott was working as a cook. My other drummer, Scott, was uh, worked as a, a knife salesman. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian was the rich kid who didn't have to work. But anyways, we saved up our um, money to put it to record a demo, yeah. um, which to us was a lot of money back then. You know, um, I think it was 30, 40 bucks an hour to record. So we were putting up everything we were earning into it. And we recorded My Own Prison, and the local radio station had a Locals Only show, and they put our song My Own Prison on the Locals Only show, and it got a great response. And they added it, and that's why I'm sitting here now, because that, that one song and that one demo um, got, you know, got people in the building to come see us play. Yeah. yeah. Well, now you have a whole bunch of uh, different projects that you've, that you've been working mm -hmm. on. You guys all have your separate things that you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, is that all just based on schedules for... Uh, for me, I, I have, as a songwriter, I have so many ideas that are never going to materialize because, uh, you know, if you have one band and only one band, you're going to put out 10 to 15 songs every couple years, and that's just not enough. I want to I wanna put more out. Um, so when I started the Tremonti band, um, it's when Miles had a three-week um, tour with Slash. Yeah. So it's like, you know what, let me record some of these songs. A lot of stuff I grew up on was heavy metal, and my rhythm section just looks at me with blank stares when I play the metal stuff. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take all this metal stuff I love and start a side project. And uh, so I called one of my best friends, Eric Friedman, and said, let's, let's get this thing going. Got uh, Garrett Whitlock, um, who was in a band that I co-produced years back, and mm -hmm. started the band, and um, we've put out four records now. So it's been, wow. been a good time. 
Yeah, and, that, and that's so cool. And then, of course, Miles has the stuff with Slash, mm -hmm. but now Slash has his other day job, so you just yeah. kind of make things work. And we all do what we can, you know? Yeah. yeah. And how cool, I mean, there, there's there's no sense in, in staying still, but mm -hmm. it's not just the music, too. You've actually, you've got a book, right? Yeah, you yeah. Can talk about that. I wrote a book called A Dying Machine. I was writing uh, my last um, record for Tremonti. Yeah. I, it feels weird saying my last name yeah. for the band, but uh, we used to call it Tremonti Project. But I wrote uh, a concept album, and about three quarters through the record, um, I decided to turn it into a novel so I could accompany the, the album and the novel together mm -hmm. so you could have more of a 3D experience, hear the music, see the sound the soundtrack for this story. And um, it's something I've always had on my bucket list to, to try to get a book published. and. Um, I had written stuff over the years and nothing ever got finished. So this time I'm like, I'm going to finish it and mm -hmm. do it. And I'm very happy that I did. And uh, John Shirley co-authored it with me because I was trying to get the book out as fast as I could. So I, I hired another author to help mm -hmm. help me do it quicker. So okay. um, I'm very proud of it. And uh, we're actually um, trying to get a publishing deal now. Good and trying to get some uh, TV deals done at the same time, so wow. we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got your hands in a little bit of everything, right? Uh, you know, I just I like being creative. I like using my imagination, and, and mm -hmm. um, there's just a few things in the world I really love doing, and that's that's right. writing music and using my imagination to, to jump into something that, that hasn't existed before you imagined it. You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, and you're always looking forward instead of looking back, but of course there's some people that want to know, like, would we ever see Creed together again? or? Ah, uh, you never know. You know, yeah. I had said I had said never again years ago. Then we did a reunion tour in two thousand nine. Yeah. Um, you know, me and Scott are, are on on good terms. You know, I spoke with him a few months back, and he's doing well. Um, he's, uh, you know, his him, him and his family are, are very happy now that, that he's doing well. And and you never know. Yeah, it's true. It's just timing. We don't know. There's so much yeah. going on. Yeah, it's true. Well, and also Miles is such a fantastic singer. I mm -hmm. mean, you you had big shoes to fill to, for, for you guys to come and, and find a, a singer that, mm -hmm. with that kind of power and presence. And Where in the world did you find him? Miles was in a band called Mayfield 4 that opened up for Creed back mm -hmm. in the day. And um, one, one of my best friends, when, we were, when the band was kind of falling apart, mm -hmm. was like, remember this singer, Miles? Um, and he, he put on a song called Summer Girl. And at the end mm -hmm. of that song, he just goes for it, and it's one of those just jaw-dropping yeah. vocal performances. And I was like, absolutely, let's put him at the top of our list. And um, the fact that he's so different than Scott, mm -hmm. it, it made it an obvious choice, because we, we didn't want to just become Creed Part Two. We wanted to completely change what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And um, if you listen to the record we just put out and then listen to a Creed record, I'd hope you'd really think these are two different bands. Yeah, you know? yeah for sure. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but the guitar and all of it's awesome. And, well, and thank you, you very much. actually have have created some pretty incredible guitars and pickups and stuff like that yourself. Was that was that always kind of a dream of yours to have your own guitar? It was not. It was just it was something that kind of um, back when I was playing Les Pauls when I was yeah. growing up, that was my instrument. And then one day um, all of our instruments got stolen on tour. Oh Somebody stole our, our van tray full of all of our gear. Wow. So I'd always seen Paul Reed Smith's but couldn't afford them. So with our insurance yeah. check, I went and bought a Paul Reed Smith. And then, um, and then they contacted me. They said, you know, would you be interested in playing some of our guitar, yeah. more of our guitars? And uh, they'd send me guitars. And I liked them, but they just weren't configured the way I liked them. Mm -hmm. the, the knobs were in the wrong spots. The tone was different. So um, by the time I said, it's not my thing, about four times, I yeah. said, why don't we just design a guitar for you? At that time, it was only Carlos Santana and myself. And, um, I was just a kid, just shocked that they'd have that opportunity. So yeah. we developed it, and then it became a great um, success for them. And since then, we've done baritone guitars. We've mm -hmm. done imported guitars. So there's guitars from all price ranges. We just put out the MT-15, which is my signature amp, last year. Yeah. And at, it, was a, it got best in show at the uh, NAMM convention, wow. which was, uh, you know, big, you know, I love amplifiers. I yeah. love amplifiers almost more than guitars. It's mm -hmm. kind of my obsession. So when we got first at Best in Show, it was uh, a big moment for me, and I'm uh, very, very proud of it. Any idea how many guitars you have, approximately? I, people ask me that all the time. I need to count one of these days, yeah. but um, I don't know. I mean, on tour, I carry about 10 because yeah. of all the different tunings. 
at home, uh, gosh, I've got a, a place where I storm at the, I don't know, 60, I don't know, yeah. 60, 70 guitars maybe. Good. Yeah. And, and a whole bunch of amps too now, Yeah, right? lots of amps. Yeah. Well, I guess when you design them, they send them to you, so yeah. there you go. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. And and what what a cool career. I mean, you've been able to do so many things, so now you, you go, okay, well, I've done music, I've mm -hmm. you know, created instruments, you got a book. What, what else are you looking to tackle? I would love to get that book turned into a TV series. That's yeah. my uh, that's my highest hope at the moment. You know, the the, the new record's out and it's doing well. I want to mm. get that. Um, you know, there's definitely a, a very um, lot of uh, interest in getting the book turned into yeah. a TV series by some by some key folks. So I'm for me hearing that news at all is, is enough to make me uh, excited. So we'll see. Yeah. And, but for now, you get people are getting to hear the new record, yep. and it's awesome. There's already so many people lined out, nice, lined up nice. outside, and they're hours away from the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also got to do some uh, meet and greets, which is really cool. So you've got mm -hmm. the whole band together. Is it kind of nice to get loved on by the fans all day? Oh, we love our fans. We have, we honestly think we have the absolute best fans in the world. I know everybody says that, but. Yeah. Uh, we mean it, you know, and it's, um, we have fans that travel all around the world watching our shows. Um, yeah. We have Junia, who's here from Japan, just flew in the other day, wow. and we have Anne that's been around the whole, we, we know all these people, they're our friends, we see them all the time. It's great because when we tour so much, it's great to see all these familiar faces out there, and um, they bring us these very unique, you know, Christmas ornaments or whatever it is, wow. and uh, we love them. They, um, you know, we, we feel very good that no matter what, I, when I was a kid, I always hoped I could, I could have music heard by people. Now we have this fan base. No matter what I do, I'll have, I'll have a group of people to listen to songs that I've written. And that's, that to me is one of the best, uh, best things in the world for me as an artist is to, to know that no matter what I work on, it's going to be heard. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. What's the strangest gift you've got? Oh, gosh. I remember back in the day we had a, somebody made a, um, uh, Battle axe, like a humongous, <laughs> uh, eight foot tall battle axe wow. with the name of the band in there. And uh, Brian took it home because yeah. I think he, I don't know if he still has it, but it was <laughs> who massive. wants the axe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then also you you get to go to so many cool corners of the world that a mm -hmm. lot of people don't get to go to. What's it, what's been the coolest place where you're like, wow, I'm actually here? Oh, geez, everywhere. You know, going to Australia is one of my favorite places in the world. Mm -hmm. Bondi Beach in Australia was yeah. probably the most. Um, well, I'd say the most beautiful, but no, Alaska is probably the most beautiful place I've been. Yeah. That's. Uh, that's incredible. Um, I like to go on adventures like Indonesia is a very different place. Yeah. You know, you go to Indonesia and it's just such a different culture. Um, you know, we've, se we've seen a lot of stuff. But, yeah. uh, I've just been, yeah, blessed to be able to see the world. Good. Well, last thing, I know now we've got s several albums to choose from. Yep. How do you will it down to a set list and what are we going to hear tonight? We will play uh, three or four of the new tracks because mm -hmm. um, people are still getting used to it. If we played all new tracks, they'd be like, come on, where's my, <laughs> where are my favorites? So we take the favorites through the years and mix them up a little bit and uh, let it fly. Yeah. Well, yeah. good. Well, one final thing. What mm -hmm. would you say is the, the ultimate Alter Bridge memory that you will always take with you? Like the one moment where you're like, this is, this is what I always dreamed of. If I... Uh, you know, I always think of it as I'm a little old man and I've got my grandkids sitting on, on grandpa's lap and they were wondering about what I did for a career. I would, I would put the uh, live at Royal Albert Hall concert mm -hmm. footage in. That's probably our most proud moment as Alter Bridge was playing with the 52-piece orchestra at the Royal Albert Hall. And um, the director captured it perfectly and uh, that was probably our best time on stage ever. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for thank being you. with us. We really appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. And stay tuned because we'll be back with more and Drew Pearson.